Hey YouTube! Um, so I know I've kind of touched on this particular topic I'm going to talk about today before in my cell phone rant, but I have a bigger, badder rant to expand on that one with, and basically it's why I would quite frankly be happy to go li or go through life without ever owning a smartphone. I'm not saying nobody should own them, I'm just saying I don't personally want one, I don't see any purpose to need one, and the fact that everybody tries to pressure anyone who doesn't have one into getting one is kind of bullshit. But I know I'm so not alone on this and I am perfectly happy with my dumb phone. You know, I mean, I don't even use that hardly at all. I mean, on the rare few opportunities I leave the house, I take it with me, like, to get a ride home or whatever, that's about it. And the occasional text, I don't even text very much, it just... <sighs> Frankly, I'd be cool with getting rid of my cell phone altogether, but my dad won't let me. He says I need to have a cell phone, so he'll let me have my dumb phone, but I have to have a phone, so whatever. Even though I like landlines much better, pretty much. Somebody wants to talk to me, I will tell them to call me on a landline, because I fucking hate cell phone service, like you do not even believe, it just is so spotty. It may be because I live in the hilly area that we have like no reception, but personally, they piss me off. I don't like them. Whatever. But this isn't about cell phones in general, this is about smartphones specifically and why I don't want one. And I know a lot of people are probably gonna get their asses chapped about this because that's how people on the internet are and feel like... I'm criticizing them specifically if it applies to them in any way, shape, or form. So I'm not singling out anyone specifically, I'd like to point out. And I'm also pointing out that while I am I know that a lot of people fall into these categories, I know there are definitely exceptions to the rules and that there's plenty of people who don't do these things that own smartphones, but it just seems like the grand majority of people who have them do at least some of these, if not all of them, and it pisses me off, and I just... I don't want to be in that category, frankly. Thank you very much, so I don't want one. Um, my first point of contention with this is the whole elitism thing between brands, like specifically Android versus Apple. The Android users hate the Apple users because they think they make a crap product and oh my god you're overpaying for something that isn't even all that great to begin with and blah blah blah. And then the Apple users like, yeah well, your Android stuff sucks and look we're Apple so that makes us better because we're Apple and it's stupid. Who the fuck cares? I, uh, I, maybe it's because I don't have a smartphone that I can honestly say that I don't give a fuck what kind of phone you use. I mean, how about the people that have like a little off-brand name phone? Do those even exist with smartphones? I don't even know, but I know it's Samsung exists, but Samsung sucks for everything, so... <laughs> Just saying. It's one of those things where there's basically always going to be some level of people taking sides and it turning into a war and it's fucking retarded! There's enough things in life that people do this over already to start with. Why the hell do we need another one for something as freaking retarded as a phone? I mean, it's bad enough people do it over their computers. I mean, at least that one, there's more division lines between PCs and Apples, but not getting into that here. Not touching it. But yeah, it's just stupid. So that's my first point. Then there's the whole having to pick a provider thing, which Pretty much, even for non-smartphone services, it's gonna be a pain in the ass, but trying to find one that has enough data for you, that's not gonna cost an arm and a leg, and this and that and the other, it just... Why is this freaking necessary? Isn't it? I mean, just... I know my cousin has like a grandfathered in plan that she got unlimited data and unlimited everything for a set rate for, I guess, eternity as long as she stays with that brand, but yeah, now you can't even get that deal anymore as far as I, I'm, I know, but I'm, I'm told you can't get that anymore. The most you can get now is something like, I want to say, 
10 gigs a month. I'm probably wrong. I know there's at least one because I see stupid ads for it all the time, but I don't know if there's a bigger one or not. But regardless, it just... It seems like a huge headache, and uh, I don't want to deal with it, and they're expensive, and you have to buy the phone first off, which I mean, I realize, yeah, you have to buy a phone anyway, but it's going to be a lot more expensive with a smartphone than it is with a dumb phone, although I didn't exactly get mine cheap either, I mean, it was still over 100 bucks, but for, like, an iPhone, it's like, I think the cheapest ones are, what, like 500 bucks or something? They go up and up and up from there. Ew, no. I mean, I know there's some plans that offer you a free phone if you sign up with their contracts and everything, which I'm pretty sure you're gonna pay more through that than the phone would have been. Um, there's the cost of the service on top of that, which are always going to be infinitely higher with a smartphone than it would be with regular cell phone. Any potential repairs and you're going to need them if you have a smartphone. God forbid you drop that motherfucker, your screen's gonna shatter. This thing, on the other hand, I have thrown it across the room in a wall that doesn't even make a dent. It makes a dent in the wall, but it doesn't do a thing to the phone, it still works, but... Yeah, you so much as accidentally drop an iPhone, that screen's gonna shatter. And I know this is one of the points with the Apple and Android users. Yeah, I know, I'm already giving myself a headache just saying it. That, oh yeah, well, Android products hold up. They won't shatter like that. Yeah, except for my brother has one, and it totally did, so nice argument. Um, so there's that, then there's all the necessary upgrades, because God forbid you have an outdated phone, oh my god. Because now with the apps, they make it so that you can't even keep using an older iPhone if you want to keep using apps because they make it defunct. They make it so you can't. And they have you basically by the balls here because they know you're not going to keep a phone that you can't really even use everything on. So you're going to keep upgrading and paying money that you don't really need to be paying. And they know it, and they know you're going to do it, and that's why they do it. So there's that, and then there's the whole thing that you have to pay for the data plans, and what tier of data plan you want. Or if you go over your data plan, you're going to pay through the nose for whatever data you use on top of that. And the contract thing, if you opt out of it before the contract's up, they freaking fine you for that too. Just, it's a lot of extra money that I don't feel like is necessary to be paying. It just... It's dumb. I don't really... Maybe it's part of that whole elitism thing like, sure, you could get a cheaper coffee somewhere else, but I'm gonna get Starbucks because it's a status symbol thing. Is this like the whole thing with smartphones? Is that like the appeal here? Is that what this is about? I, I feel like it probably is. And then the lifespan of these phones is really short too. I mean, I've had two cell phones my whole life. And I've had cell phones since the early 2000s. Uh, the first one lasted me up until 2010. And by that point it had completely bricked. That is the only reason I even bought a second one. The second one I still have, so it's like four years old. Still works like the day I got it. And Then there's smartphones that like you have to buy a new one every year or every couple of years if you're slow. But you apparently have to keep upgrading them or they'll just become defunct or break or become defunct and break or just things happen with them that don't think or they don't seem like they were a thing on just old school phones it just wasn't a thing it didn't happen i mean maybe it did a little bit with like if you tried to use internet on like an old school phone and then found out oh hey yeah we don't even support that anymore on your phone because it's so fucking old ha ah! Good thing I never used it in the first place. I only found out because I accidentally hit the button for it. But yeah, I don't really care. I have a computer for that, but it just seems like technology has a short enough lifespan as is. And then the smartphones have that much tinier of one before I need to have the new shiny newest greatest thing. It's consumerism at its best, basically. And then where do you think all these old phones go after you get rid of them and upgrade them or had to get rid of it because you broke it? 
They're gonna go in a landfill somewhere. Do you know how many of these stupid things are adding up? I mean, it was bad enough with uh, just the regular cell phones anyway and the current, or not current, the constant upgrade process with that a lot of people were doing. I refused to ever upgrade mine when they told me I could, but that's just me. But again, like I said, where do you think they go? They go in a landfill and sure there's recycling places you can take them, but most people don't and they just end up becoming e-waste. And it's horrible for the environment. And given how often that people are upgrading them now, it's that many more that are ending up in landfills. I'm sure there's probably some huge fucking landfill somewhere that is nothing but old dead smartphones and cell phones at this point. It just... <sighs> we're fucking up the planet enough as it is. So we're gonna do it some more for completely unnecessary reasons? I am so lost on this concept. Another big point that I have against uh, smartphones I know doesn't apply to everybody, but it applies to me. I fucking hate touch screens like you would not believe. I hate that they get fingerprints all over them. I hate that they get scratches easy. I really hate attempting to type on one. Which is why I have my little dumb phone and I have my slider keyboard. Because I can work with that. I was even cool with the whole numerical thing where you had to cycle through the numbers to get to the letters. I got so good at that shit I didn't even have to look at the phone. I could be doing it over here and not looking at it and carrying on a conversation. I could do it that well. Didn't matter. The touch screens though. I have tried those stupid things and I am so slow that I'm suddenly having flashbacks to my grandpa trying to type, going tap, 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 like the hunt and peck thing. This has suddenly become me with a touch screen because it doesn't let you just like blaze through. You can only do it slowly. I mean, sure you could dun 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 dun, but that's still exceptionally slow compared to what I'm used to. And I don't do well with that, especially for anybody who's ever actually seen me type on a computer. I can't handle typing slow. It just does not work for me it is probably one of my biggest pet peeves in the entire world of out of anything and I can't handle it and my dad even tried to sell me on upgrading to an iPhone and he'd fucking give it to me for free and I was like no unless you can find a way to get a keyboard on that shit mm -mm. don't want one I do not want one and I did google this and they do make them apparently for like another $90 that you have to buy for a thing that you have to plug in every time you want to use and it's big and bulky and apparently really flimsy according to all the reviews and no, I don't want one. And sure you could argue that there's the whole talking to it thing, the speech recognition, but when you have a mild speech impediment and you have a lisp, it doesn't pick up speech right. I have an iPod, I've tested this, it doesn't work very well for me. Like, nine times out of ten, it'll be wrong. I don't want to sit there spending even more time going back and correcting all the words that it got wrong, which is about 90% of them, which is going to take longer than if I just sat there and slowly typed it out in the first place anyway. <sighs> I don't know. It just... I don't like them. I don't want one. I intend on holding off on getting one as long as humanly possible. I really legit don't want one. If somebody else wants one, that's cool for them, but I don't want one. <laughs> um, I think I already talked about them breaking hella easy. The, um, ah, the whole thing with a special, I mean, this is true of cell phones kind of too, but smartphones especially, because it's not just texting and calls, it's also emails and Facebook messages and Skype things and this, that, and the other. It's almost impossible to disconnect completely from the world. I mean, unless you turn that shit all the way off, which after you're spending that much money on this stupid thing a month anyway, I don't think you're gonna just willingly turn it off all the time. <sighs> yeah, pretty much you're going to be reachable 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and people are going to expect that you respond right away. And if you don't, they're gonna think that you don't like them, or that you're being rude, or unprofessional, or one of like a zillion different things and just 
there is apparently no such thing as being off the grid anymore. I have a better- and, and this is supposed to be a selling point, that you can be reached at all times. I have a better idea. I don't want to be reached at all times. I generally am a pretty solitary person. I don't want to be reachable all hours of the day. I mean, yeah, I know there's the whole thing in settings. You can turn it off at certain hours where you won't get any notifications from people. But no, I just, I don't like the whole concept even during the day for that matter. I don't want to be completely accessible to the world all the fucking time. Even with my normal cell phone, when people text me, it often takes me a day or two to get back to people because I generally don't carry it with me. I don't look at the damn thing. I don't want to look at the damn thing. It's not that I don't want to talk to people, period. I just want to do it on my terms, which... I don't know, it feels like people are losing sight of people's right to be able to do that. They want everything now, 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 and if you aren't gonna comply with that, then okay, bye bye we'll find somebody else then. Which doesn't really seem fair, but oh well. My sisters always joke that I live in my own little 1970s pod, and you know what? I'm quite happy here, so whatever. I'll stay here happily in my 70s pod. But like, you can't even take a vacation anywhere, or just have downtime, or time with your family, or anything without the stupid thing having you on call all hours of the day. And chances are you're not a brain surgeon, you're not some type of job that would require you to be on call 24 hours a day and have to be able to jump at a moment's notice to whatever the thing is. You're not that important. Why is this a thing? Why has this become the norm? It just seems like really narcissistic behavior. I don't get it, and I don't want to get it, honestly. I don't want to understand that mentality. Not to mention that there are even bigger time sucks than just dicking around on the internet on a computer is, because it's so much smaller and more convenient. You're gonna sit there playing games on your phone, Pretty much any time, any place, and think nothing of it and get nothing accomplished for it. You could have been doing something productive with your time, but instead I'm gonna sit here playing Flappy Bird or whatever it may be, Temple Rum or is that a thing? I feel like that's a thing, but um, yeah, see, I really don't even know. I feel like I know through osmosis through other people's, but yeah, I don't really know for sure. Um, but it's like, this is why people don't read anymore. They don't bother because they're so fucking addicted to, like, their apps and their games and whatever else is on there, I guess, that they don't have time for leisurely pursuits because these have become the leisurely pursuits instead. And I mean, yeah, there's the Kindle app thing. I suppose you could read on it, but who wants to read on an itty bitty teeny tiny screen? I don't think many people would want to. I know I wouldn't want to. I tried to on my iPod once just to see what it was like and it gave me a headache really fast and no, I don't want to. And I'm not even farsighted. I, I don't need reading glasses. I'm nearsighted. I see up close really well. So the fact that it gave me a headache that really fast, that kind of freaked me out. But yeah, it just seems like they hinder productivity. They also hinder creativity. Because you're so busy distracting yourself with these things in any downtime that you have, you have no time to think of thoughts, original things, ideas, at all. And that just strikes me as really sad. And then there's the whole phone snubbing thing. Which apparently has a name now. It's called fubbing. Not with an A. It's like P-H-U-B-B-I-N-G. Because it's phone snubbing. And it's that whole thing I already talked about in my other cell phone rant video about how nobody can just sit down and enjoy each, other, each other's company anymore. You can find like a group of teenagers sitting around texting each other even though they're sitting right next to each other and they won't make a peep. Or you'll be at a family like holiday dinner. Almost everybody around that damn table is going to have their cell phones out and they'll be doing whatever they are doing on their cell phones. Nobody really talking to anybody except for the few and far between people who don't have the smartphones 
and you can walk by and go, hey, is George Bush still president? And they'll just like nod because they're so zoned out. They're not even listening. That's proof right there of just how much they're zonked. They're like phone zombies. They don't even hear. I mean, they hear it, but they don't hear it. It's like they'll just like nod just to shut you up because they're more involved in what they're doing on the phone than in actually concentrating on you or what you're saying to them. And the one that gets me, I know I already mentioned this, but I'm going to mention it again, is the people who go out on a date and they're both on their phones, like the whole date. I don't know if they're texting each other or if they're texting other people, but the whole date on the phones. Uh, the head's bent and they're over the phones whole fucking time. I've like people watched enough times to see this happen over and over and over again. And I feel like I should be sitting there with popcorn because I'm just like, really? This is for fucking real right now. Are you serious? I also feel like I should be flinging some of that popcorn at them to try and get them to look up for like a second even at each other, but... I don't know, it just... it strikes me as really rude. And is another one of my hugest pet peeves, and it it's like getting more and more pervasive, I've noticed. Because more people do it, it's becoming expected and accepted behavior. And people just don't even question it, they just do it. And the irony here is that they have no problem with doing that, no matter how rude it is. Yet if I bring my laptop somewhere and whip that out and start just dicking around on there, because obviously nobody's gonna pay attention to me because they're all too busy with their damn phones. Oh, the second I bring out my computer, Jennifer, put that away, that's rude. <laughs> Do you listen to yourselves? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's the same fucking thing. But apparently... It's accepted if it's on a phone, but not on a computer. What the fuck's the difference? You're probably doing the same shit I am. You're obviously not paying attention to me, so what's the difference if I decide to zone out too? Just because yours is smaller and more compact and you think you can hide it if you hold it really close, you think nobody sees that shit? You think everybody's unaware that you're doing this? We see that just as much as you see my big-ass computer, and I don't really give a fuck. If you're being so rude that you're gonna pay more attention to your phone than you are to me, sorry that I'm such a waste of your time that you need to zone out, but okay, you really don't want to pay attention to me? That's fine, but I'm gonna get my computer out. You think that's rude? Too goddamn bad. I don't care how hypocritical it is, but it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, you're gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. If you don't like it, fuck yourself. So... Not to mention, pretty much anything you can do on a smartphone, you can do on a computer anyway. I mean, I realize there's some ex I can talk. Some exceptions to that. Like, I realize you have to be dependent on Wi-Fi and having it available for a computer. Which I know a lot of people also do with smartphones, but they also have the 3G thing. So if there's no Wi-Fi, like if they're driving and they want to use GPS, okay, that's a thing, and they can do that, and you can't really do that with a computer that you, even if you had it in the car, you can't really do that on a computer. Fair enough. What you could have done, though, was print out a friggin' map. But nobody apparently does that anymore, and I get weird looks for going to MapQuest and printing out maps anymore for going somewhere. Oh my god, why wouldn't you just do that on your iPhone? I don't have an iPhone. What do you mean you don't have an iPhone? Then you must have an Android. I don't have a smartphone. Oh my god, what kind of dark ages do you live in? That sort of judgment to me is like really off-putting for why the hell would I want to jump on this bandwagon when you're like so just hypercritical of anybody who doesn't have one that you jump all over them for it? That no. That's doing the opposite. That's pushing me away from wanting one. Because I don't want to be a lemming. I don't want to drink the Kool-Aid, as it were. Just, no, I don't want to do that. Other than, like, maps and, I guess, like, Yelp reviews of somewhere, if you're trying to figure out where to go eat and you're already out and are trying to figure somewhere out, I can see where those would be useful. Aside from those, I really don't see anything you can do on a phone that you can't do on a computer. I mean, sure, you can get specific here. On a technicality, you can go, well, you can't use so-and-so app on a computer. No, I can't. 
but I'm sure I can probably use something way the fuck better. Like the whole argument of, you can't use Instagram on a computer. No, but there's Statagram, so I can view anybody who has one, and there's Photoshop that does way the fuck more than your little Instagram filters will any day. So, there's that. But, nobody cares, so. <sighs> I just don't know. I just do not know. But, I know a lot of people make the argument that phones are so much smaller and more compact and easier to lug around than a computer, and okay, legit enough argument. But what about the tablet market? It's sort of the in-between step if you really want to go that route. I mean, I don't really see the point of tablets. I think they're dumb, but my sister has one, so she kind of has that in-between step. But it just... <sighs> It doesn't seem worth it to me. I'd rather have a much more powerful computer than a phone or a tablet, but that's just me. <sighs> and then there's the whole thing of people becoming really unaware of their surroundings when they're like glued to their phones 24-7. And I mean this both in just blocking out the world and in the sense of putting themselves in danger. Um, on the first point, they can be out in public and they'll be totally missing anything of beauty around them. They could be in a city and completely missing out on historical landmarks, nice buildings, pretty person crossing the street, completely unaware because they're on their phone. Whether or not they're listening to music is another thing entirely because there's plenty of arguments that can be made on that point separately even without a phone, so I'm not going to bother with that. But just as far as looking around goes, yeah you miss out on a lot when your eyes are con just constantly glued to that screen and you don't even look up as you're walking. This is how people get, like, they wander out into the street and get hit by a car that they didn't even see coming because they're so glued to their fucking phone. And then there's the flip side of that coin of they can be the driver who is glued to the phone despite all the laws about no texting and driving and then they run somebody down or they get into a wreck or a million things and uh, it just pisses me off. I mean, I realize that yeah, you could text um, an old school phone while driving as well, but it seems like there's a lot more things people can distract themselves with on phones, on smartphones, than the old school ones. And then in terms of like danger, there have been like ridiculous amounts of things like, well, I mean, I already touched on too, like wandering out into the street or getting hit by a car, being the one running into somebody with a car. There's a story in the news of somebody who had their phone out in like a nature preserve. They got eaten by a fucking bear. If you hadn't been on your phone, I'm pretty sure you'd notice a goddamn bear. <sighs> it, it's not rocket science. <sighs> I just, not to mention, if you're glued to your phone, two points. You are making yourself a lot more prime to be mugged in general, but also be mugged for your phone. And then where are you going to be without your phone that is apparently your life source? <laughs> but I mean, you don't have one out and you're more aware of your surroundings, you're less likely to get, I'm not saying that you won't for sure, because it can happen to anybody, but the odds decrease quite a bit if you don't have it out in the open and visible. So there's that. And there's a ton of other different stories that have been in the news of bad shit that has happened to people because they were unaware of their surroundings, because they were too glued to their phones, like the people that were on that bus. And here's a gunman who whips out a gun. He's even scratching his nose with the hand that's holding the gun. And all these people are just so glued to their phones, they were completely unaware that this guy was even there and about to shoot him till they heard gunfire. I mean, it's not like not being on the phone would have necessarily saved your ass, but you at least would have maybe had some sort of half a chance to do something to get out of the line of fire. I don't know, but it just strikes me as really sad. Not to mention there's the whole consumerism aspect of this in that I think a lot of people think they want or need an iPhone or a smartphone or whatever because the media and society tells them that they want one and that they need one. 
it's I mean if you stop and think why do I want this thing and try to make a list can you even make that list cuz I've come across plenty of people of I've asked the question to that can't even answer they just think they're or they should, or that they're supposed to. And they don't even have a concrete answer as to why they want one, much less need one. And I can tell you it's because of the media and because of people telling them and pressuring them into thinking that they need one, whether they actually do or not. I know people who get by without any cell phone whatsoever at all. So I don't want to hear this bullshit that you need one. I mean, you want one, you have legit reasons, you want to overpay on something like that, be my guess, but I'm just saying, if you can't even answer the question of why you want one, you might want to reevaluate some things. Just saying. Um, and then there's the whole aspect that people become really reliant on having the internet at their fingertips. I mean, I suppose it's also true of laptops and the internet in general, but... On a smartphone, you can be out in public and it'll still be immediate because it's right there. You don't have to wonder about anything. You don't have to be curious about anything. You're just gonna Google it on your phone or do Siri or Wikipedia or whatever. There's no learning process really anymore. And this goes for the whole maps thing too in that you can live in a city for years now and never learn your way around because you get all reliant on the GPS in your phone, and you have no idea how to get by without it. And it's pretty sad, really, but... Yeah, that... It just seems like people are becoming more and more brainless the more reliant they're becoming on their phones. And I think that's adding to part of that whole zombie population thing, the phone zombie thing, in that they don't think for themselves. They don't think at all, really, because they're so glued to the phone and being wired into that phone that this is the priority that wins out above all else, is that stupid phone. And being able to just search something on a phone. Yeah, find me somebody these days who doesn't have to search things. They actually just know these things. It's probably going to be somebody older who doesn't have a smartphone, I can almost guarantee. So what are you going to do if there's, like, a massive, like, I don't know, earthquake or something that knocks out the power? Where are you going to be when your phone's battery runs out and you can't rely on that shit anymore? Where it knocks out the service for your phone? Where are you going to be then when you don't know how to do shit because you've relied on just looking things up on your phone for years and years now you don't know how to do anything? What are you going to do then? The whole survival of the fittest thing I'm pretty sure is gonna win out at that point, although I don't think there's been too many natural disasters that have knocked out cell phone service for particularly long periods of time, but hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking here, it just strikes me as that a lot of people would be absolutely fucked if they uh, suddenly couldn't use their phones anymore. Not to mention that they're just in general, super addictive, and I mean, that's true of the internet too, and I've watched this progression since I've been on the internet since 1993. And I've seen the whole thing from dial-up modems, where people would be on it, sure, probably on average several hours a day, that's about it, they'd get on with things. And then there was the advent of Wi-Fi and laptops, and it became a lot more of a thing to be on it most of the time because it was easier and you could bring the computer with you wherever. But as soon as smartphones came around, um, the addiction thing became way, way worse to the point where if something happens to a person's phone, there have legit been reports of people killing themselves because they can't afford to replace the phone and they can't live without the phone. Yeah, I'm judging some people really hard right now. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I am super judging these people. Which, I mean, again, it could be argued that not everybody who uses this technology is gonna use it that way, but 
it seems like the grand majority of people who use smartphones become super fucking addicted to them. And I realize that I, little Miss Internet addic Addiction here, should not be talking about cell phone addiction probably, since I'm probably equally as bad with my laptop as most people are with their phones. But I'm just pointing it out that you end up missing out on a lot of life when you're always glued to the internet. So it's a, it's a priorities thing, and it's your call to make, I'm sure. It's always your call of what your priorities are, but it is fact. You are going to miss out on a lot of things if your prime focus is on your phone, or even if it's on your computer, the majority of the time. So it's just something to think about there. And there's an interesting sort of evolution that's happened as well. This is also true for... The internet in general as well as with smartphones but people like losing their sense of empathy for other human beings especially when it's kids that get started young on phones and they don't really learn to interact with people in like face-to-face -face conversations they don't learn the impact of their words on another person they can say something hurtful to somebody else and in person, if they see that they've wounded that person with their words, a lot of times they're going to learn, oh, that wasn't a good thing to do. Maybe I shouldn't say things like that. Unless they're a sociopath, but... <laughs> um, on a phone, or even on the internet in general, when it's just words on a page and you don't see another person, and you say the same hurtful thing to a person, you don't see what happens as a result of your words and it's really damaging with kids when they start with that really young they never learn the whole empathy thing they grow up to be dicks and I think that's probably a big part of why society as a whole is getting a lot ruder these days is because they're losing sight of what impact their words have on other people <sighs> and that it bothers me too but I don't see that changing anytime soon I mean, unless it starts being taught in schools, the whole just, what is the word I'm looking for? Just etiquette of how to deal with people, both in real life and on the internet or on their phone, I don't see that problem going away. I, I see it getting worse, probably. And not to mention, you give a phone to a kid that young and I mean yeah there's parental controls you could set time locks on it but realistically how many parents actually do that I haven't seen too many actually employ them so you have this kid running around with free roam of the internet and at their fingertips and of their phones which is a much scarier prospect now than it used to be honestly in my opinion because with the advent of social media it's a lot scarier than just randomly trolling websites but it puts them in a prime position to develop addiction issues. It gives them, or it puts them in a position where they could get in a lot of trouble with a lot of things, with predators, with, like, legal issues, hacking if they end up getting into that, or pirating or whatnot, which it just... I mean, that's more of a computer thing, I suppose, but I, I don't know, maybe it could be done from a phone, like I said, I don't use a smartphone, so I don't know how much can be done on a smartphone versus a computer, but you put them in the prime environment for it young, and they grow up just thinking that's the norm, especially if their friends are doing it too, then they really think it's the norm and they think it's okay, until something bad happens. And nobody wants something bad to happen to them. I mean, if anything, there should be, like, a, essentially a safe playground for them to mess around with, whatever. But, and there are some, but you give a kid unlimited access to a phone that can connect, they're gonna abuse it. They're a kid. I'm sorry. Me, I'm sure you think that your kid is the exception to the rule, but they're not. No kid is the exception to the rule when they have that much free reign. So unless you're going to sit there and babysit their ass every time they pick up that phone, which I don't think you are, 
there you go. And the older they get towards the teen years, the more problematic it's gonna be for obvious reasons there. And I mean, it was already a thing with computers, but it's easier to monitor computer use than it is a phone that they can easily sneak off with and do shit on that you don't know about. At least with a computer, you can enforce rules of it having to be in a family room where there's constant supervision, or you can set up things where you can monitor what they're doing, but I don't think they really have that for phones so much. They have it where they can lock certain apps and where there's time limits. I think that's about the scope of parental controls on smartphones, so they have a long way to go on that. It just, I don't know, it seems like a really bad idea to me to even give a smartphone to a kid, period. I honestly feel like even a dumb phone like mine is really dumb to give to a kid, period. I don't think they need one. But that's just me. Um, one that I've seen pop up in the news quite a few times, and I've fact-checked this a few different places, and it seems like the numbers on this study vary a lot, so I'm not sure just how much of a thing this is, but apparently some people have even, like, taken to using their phones, like, checking them, messaging people, while they're having sex. Oh my god, I just... If you have to check your phone while you're doing that, you probably shouldn't even be allowed to have sex. I'm just gonna throw that one out there. And then there's the whole fact of that smartphones emit more radiation than any other cell phone ever has in the history of cell phones. And they have the shortest battery life, too. Which... <sighs> I'm cool with my dumb phone that lasts like two or three days without needing to be charged, even if I use it a lot. How's that smartphone doing for you, where it's like dead in a couple hours? Just saying, but the radiation thing is more of a concern to me than the other. I mean, I I feel like I'd be one of those people who would feel the need to like wrap it in tinfoil and keep it across the room from me while it's not in use because I'd be so scared of the radiation. I mean, to be fair, my cell phone is nowhere near me when I sleep either. It's also across the room and like in the closet because I am so irrationally scared of the radiation from it. Pretty much I move electronics in general as far the fuck away from me as I can when I sleep. I mean, yeah, I'm sure somebody's gonna make the smart-ass comment that, well, your laptop throws off radiation too. Yeah, I don't sleep with that near me either, so whatever. I also have a thing under it, so it's never directly on my lap when I use it, so. So there's that. Um, I'm trying to think of what other points I have to make on why I don't want a smartphone. I think I've come up with a pretty damn good list, though. Could always add to it later, but just in general, I'm sure there's a lot of good things I can do, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't abuse them, but it seems like, by and large, they're really just turning people into a generation of assholes, and I don't like it, and I don't want to be a part of it. And I don't feel like I should have to be a part of it just because everybody else is doing something. It's like that whole thing of, if your friends all jumped off a cliff, would you? And eh, I think I could honestly say I'd be the one standing back and going, ah, dumbasses. Yeah, okay, I'll be forever alone over here, but um, you're dead and I'm not. So there's that. You jumped off a cliff, like a dumbass, just because other people jumped off a cliff. I'm generally not a sheeple like that on most things, so I don't know. It just, if you have a smartphone, whatever, I'm not telling you to get rid of your smartphone. I'm just telling you that I think a lot of you misuse them, and I think that you overuse them. But again, it's your call to make, but don't expect rational people who don't use smartphones to really want to have much to do with you or associate with you very much. So, yeah, I try to spend as little time as possible with people who have smartphones. I will pretty much go out of my way to avoid having anything to do with them if I can do it at all. <laughs> I'm not even joking, like, it is sometimes a deal breaker for me with friends. I will, honest to god, like, find any way of bailing on hanging out with them if they have a smartphone, and I know that they're of the type 
who will sit there on their smartphone the whole time anyway. I mean, if they just had a smartphone and they didn't misuse it, I wouldn't care, but when they're of the type that just sit there glued to the phone the whole time, what the fuck's the point? Hell no, I'm not gonna waste my time. So, that's just me. I'm entitled my opinion just as much as you're entitled to be glued to your phones, I guess.